Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Classroom, Classroom 20 Live today. It's Saturday, March the 9th, 2013. Our topic today is a uh, featured teacher, and our special guest today is Jamie Cook. And we're all appreciative for Jamie sharing her time with us today and for everyone in the chat being with us. A couple of shout outs to Lori Moffa, our backup moderator in the chat, as well as Tammy Moore, who's providing closed captioning for those who. Uh, have a hearing impairment or English as a first language is not yours. And you'll find that uh, you let people know in, uh, if they want to come back to the recording, that option is available for everyone. We start out by telling you some resources that we have for this show. And one of them is our live binder. And I think someone will just drop a link to the live binder in the session. You're going to find a collection of all the resources shared today. And uh, it's a great way to go back and click on the information being shared, as well as if you look at the sidebar. We're using the side panels for uh, your links. The last one there is Classroom 20 Live. And you can get access to the survey and asking your request for a professional development certificate. If it doesn't open for you in the window, and Kim talks about it a little later, then you can always go back to our live binder and find the links to the resources for Classroom 20. As well, excuse me, I'm flipping too quickly here. As well as the live binder, I, we have a website, live.classroom20.com. And maybe some of you have been there with us. We really point you to the archives and resources page because we collect, again, all the connections that you need and links to uh, use the resources when you come back or share them with somebody else. The full Blackboard Collaborate uh, link is there for you as the recording. There's an MP3 file. There's an embedded video file so that you can actually share that in a web page somewhere else if you want to use it for professional development. And what's not only do we give the links in the blog post to the same things we have in the live binder, I'll just make a comment about that. If you're sharing or someone else shares a link in the in the chat, don't worry about that chat log because we do keep a copy of it for you. Plus, any of your links or someone else in the session who has uh, something to share that's pertinent to the session, they get added to the links in the uh, blog archives and resources page as well as the live binder. So I think I quickly went over all the different ways that we support you during our show. And I want to move on to making you do a little bit of work here. So this is the laser pointer time. Remember on the whiteboard tools to the left of your screen, the second one down is a little laser pointer. You're going to click on that and drop it on the map. And if that's not working or you feel you'd like to type further, please drop it in the chat. I'll just give a few, a few seconds here where people get used to making that pointer work. And again, it's nice to see the, the around the world connections and great people are typing in the chat where they're located. So that's a bit of fun. So now I'm going to make you vote. We have some polling questions coming up here just to help uh, Jamie get a sense of uh, the audience. And so the poll question option is just to the right underneath your name. You need to click on it in the drop down menu. You see the little picture there? Yes or no, do you use Edmodo in the classroom? So I'm going to wait for a minute for people to vote. And then I'll publish the results. I think we've got most of them there. Let's see. I don't have my right pointer. Move the, I'll just be a second here. More people than are not using Edmodo. So I think that, uh, Jamie, you're going to take that information and uh, help people discover the benefits of using Edmodo. So let's go on to the next poll question. And that is, are Google Docs used in your classroom? So a green check if it's yes, and a red X if it's no. Great, so if you don't have a classroom, don't worry. I'm just going to publish the results for this particular question. And uh, considerably more people in the session are using Google Docs. Our final poll question is uh, specifically about Facebook. And it is, have you branched into Facebook into the classroom? So Green X if you haven't, Red X if you haven't. And publishing the results. 
And most of the people are not using it in the session, Jamie, so I'm sure you're going to have some good advice for the people in uh, our session today. Thank you very much, everyone, for taking the opportunity to uh, vote with us. I'm going to now uh, formally introduce Jamie Cook to us. It's a pleasure to have you today as our featured teacher. And just so that uh, people have some background for you, you are from Gladewater District School Board in uh, Gladewater, Texas. She's been teaching grade 8 math for 8 years. And I like that, that 8 and 8. And uh, people say that she's kind of crazy for teaching math, but she does love teaching math. And she loves teaching 8th graders. And Interesting enough, with the math background, she earned a BBA in accounting and MBA in business because she felt that if she needed to have a backup uh, career, if the one that she really chose, that not being a teacher, didn't work out for her, so she could always go back to accounting. And she has worked in uh, a bank herself, but she says she found nothing fulfilling about it. She, she finished early at work during the day and had, had to find things to keep her busy. And that's completely different now that she's uh, teaching. Um, her students really question, you know, was she in the right uh, field? You know, couldn't she make more money from accounting? And I think it's really noteworthy that she says, when you choose a career path, it's more about being fulfilled than, than what makes you happy. She teaches for the same school board that she attended in second grade, and where she was a valedictorian in her graduation. And she's so happy to be working in uh, her hometown. And uh, she even teaches with a few teachers who taught her, so it's a, a great connection. She's uh, married to her high school sweater, and she has a five-year-old son. So it's great to hear about your uh, background, Jamie. It's my great opportunity to turn the microphone over to you. And as always with our featured teacher, we do have the question, what does Web 202 mean to you, and why do you use Web 202 tools in your classroom? So again, welcome, Jamie. Take the mic. and. Uh, it's all yours. Um, good morning. Thank you so much for letting me come here. Today is our first official day of spring break, so this is a, a great beginning to it. Um, Web 2.0 for me, I think, is just an interaction that you can have now with your kids just beyond the traditional classroom. It takes you know, teaching to a level that the kids are already using in their everyday lives. And because it's so part of their personal lives, they're at a comfort level with it. And so it's a very easy transition for the kids to use it in the classroom. I think the harder part uh, is getting the teachers who have never really been comfortable with the technology. It's getting them you know, comfortable with using it and letting the kids you know, kind of go with their expertise. I've had so many kids show me you know, different things that we can do and how we can do it. I mean, we, we can truly learn from them. So it's great to let them be in that, in that role form of it. So I've really enjoyed coming up with new ways to, to branch into the technology. And I'm always trying to find new things. So I love, you know, coming up with anything that you can just use to enhance, you know, the, the education of the kids. <coughs> Excuse me, allergy season here in Texas is upon us. All right, well, we're just going to kind of get started, and you know, I'm new to this, so you know, bear with me. I'm going to kind of go between the slides that we have on here and then into some of the actual sites that I do use in the classroom. The first thing that I created, I guess I've had this for about seven years with my class wiki. Our school you know, wanted us to have a class website that the parents and students can get to in order to, you know, keep up with what's going on in the classroom. But that was just so one-sided. You know, it was me putting in the information and it wasn't allowing me to hear anything back from parents or students. And so I branched into wiki spaces and I created a class wiki that way. And so from our school web page, you know, I just link it to my wiki instead of doing the traditional web page this way. So now I have parents able to, you know, go in and log on and, and make comments. And then I also have the kids able to come on in there as well. So let me just kind of go over to it real quick, hopefully. No, it's not going to let me. I don't know if I want to do that. OK, I hope you're able to see. My, my wiki page that's up there right now. So this is just a, you know, the, the basic wiki page that I have. So if you look over here on the, the, the right-hand side, I have you know, where the kids can come on and they can 
see, you know, what we have going on for the classwork and the homework. Uh, the weekly assignments that I have on here, they're able to get on and, and download. So one of my big things is, you know, I try to make as minimal paper copies as possible. So I'll give them their one copy, and then if they lose it, you know, I'll tell them, well, you know, you can go log on to the wiki and print it yourself, which amazingly, those papers that they lost are somehow now found when it, you know, puts them into the position of having to take care of it as well. So over here, you know, just some basic information uh, points for the kids and the parents. And then over on the class entry, this is what I really started branching into a couple of years ago. And um, this allows them, let me get, go here to the how would you solve it. This is one that I have for the kids to do discussion questions. So I'll, I have it set up in which, you know, they have a particular problem due by a particular due date. And so I'll come up here into the discussion post. And this is where I post the one question. Last year, I learned the hard way, and I just posted it where the kids could just start their own post. And I had so many that I wanted to go back and delete, you know, when I started the new school year. So this year, I just started it by one problem at a time. So uh, let me just click on one just very quickly. And this was the problem, you know, that, that was due by yesterday. And so I put the problem up there. And then my kids are able to log on and reply to that, telling me, you know, how would you go about solving it. One of the big things I do in my classroom is to justify in which the kids are having to tell me exactly what they're doing in order to get the problem. So this takes out the paper and pencil aspect of it, and they're having to use their words, you know, in order to, to do it. At the beginning of the year, I know some of you might think, you know, how, how did the kids get their accounts? Uh, they don't have to have an email address. You can create the, the members yourself. And so when I go over here to the Manage Wiki, when I have it set up, if you go to the User Creator tool, it allows you to upload like an Excel spreadsheet, and it generates the passwords for me. So I never have to worry about, you know, keeping up with that. And then I just uh, am able to save that, that spreadsheet, and then I use those same passwords for other things that we do uh, within the classroom. So I'm going to try to go back over here. Let me stop this. Okay, I hope I, I made that back. Okay, but the, the class with you, like I said, is just a place for them to be able to go and also for the parents to see as well. Oh, sorry. Okay, uh, the how would you solve it, that was the one thing that I just discussed. Now let me also show you how I have able, been able to link the Google Docs within my class wiki. So this little snapshot that I have is of one of the, the pages that I have on there, and it's going to link us to a Google Doc. So let me go pull that one up. All right, so I have it over here on the side, and so they're able to click on it. And again, they have it to where, if I can get out of that little, where they come and click on the, the little entry here. So when they click it, it takes them to a Google Doc that I've set up. And up here where it says the share, I've got it to where they're able to, uh, they're able to look at it without um, having to log on. So they don't have to have their own email to log on to it. I've got it to where they can just log on and enter in the information. So this is just one of those, you know, I start with the, the first basic three, and give them a pattern, and then they just put in their name and they tell me, you know, what comes next, which is not a big deal, but this gives us the data that we need for the next part. So you'll see I have where I can create a quiz, and the quiz I created, okay, obvious, oh, I, I messed that one up, sorry, let me go back to this one. I resaved over that one and never fixed it. So this is just a, a form that we created in Google Docs, and so they're able to enter their name and then refer back to the table that they also created and answer the questions, you know, what the expression would be and, and if it's proportional or non-proportional. Some of you are not math people, so I'm not going to, you know, get into to that part of it. But the form is just a great thing. So they enter it and then submit it. And let me go over here to my actual Google Doc account. So that same form that they entered in, whenever I click on the, the spreadsheet in my Google Doc account, it pulls up the results of it. And so it's running very, very slow. It'll tell me, you know, what time that they logged into it. Let me go back to another one. 
and it'll give me, you know, their answers to it, who did it, and uh, it gives you kind of like a way to grade it all in one place so I know who did it, you know, what their expression was, and then the answer to it. And then we're able to talk about it as a class and discuss, you know, the way, the form of how some of them wrote their answers and stuff. But this is a quiz, essentially, that they did all through technology, and then all of the do uh, answers are put right here into this form, so I'm able to see it in one place, and then I can take the information, you know, however I want to, and, and we can come up with, with different scenarios and stuff for it. So uh, having the Google Doc just makes it so much easier in order to uh, keep up with information. We use it also for collaboration among teachers. And, you know, we'll create, uh, just for example, we had an incentive day yesterday and some of the kids weren't going to be allowed to participate. So, you know, we had the criteria in a Google Doc and it just eliminates everyone having to email the same form back and forth and everyone at one time can be entering it um, at the same time. And if you create it and just share it with anyone who has a link, you know, maybe they can edit it, maybe not. Um, that way it eliminates the people, you know, actually having to have their own email account. With um, our kids, we do not have our kids um, have their own email account, and so that's not anything that we've ever branched into. And, uh, you know, I want to make it clear for my class, we don't have, you know, student computers, essentially. I have my laptop that I use that I run the projector and the smart board off of, but I don't have any other computers in the classroom, and um, I have one iPad. So, you know, this is not a classroom that's full of, you know, computers everywhere. We do have a computer lab, which I'm sure most of you, you know, have to fight and battle with the other teachers in order to get, get the kids in there, you know, like I do as well. So uh, we go into the computer lab, you know, I try to get in there at least once in six weeks, and uh, there's 24 computers. I've got a class of 30, so the, some of the kids are having to share, and you know, you just work with it. You go with it. You find what has to, to work for your kids, and you know, you can group the two kids together who can share, and uh, you know, the ones who are need, need more of the hands-on part, you know, you just kind of make sure that each of them are getting their fair share at, you know, getting their hands on the computer. Some of the information that I have the kids, like those discussion posts, I don't right now because I don't have that much, much access to uh, computers for all my kids. I make that a requirement for my advanced class, and that's just one of the ways that um, we uh, differentiate between the advanced and the regular class. And I, I don't ever tell the regular kids that, you know, they can't do it. I, I kind of offer uh, extra credit and bonus if they're taking that initiative because some of the kids obviously have computers at home, but not all of them do. But those kids who are in advance, you know, you know, sometimes they'll able, one student at a time can run to the computer lab, you know, if another um, teacher is in there and they can sit at the computer, you know, for about five minutes. The stuff that I have them doing uh, through the wiki does not take a very long time, so they're able to kind of do it in little bitty short snippets. Sometimes the kids will come in during lunch, uh, they'll eat upstairs with me in my room, and they'll grab my laptop, and they'll get it done pretty quick. One of the electives that the kids have is a computer course, which, you know, pretty much they end up, oh, we just played games in there today. So I talked to the computer teacher, and I said, look, here's my link to my wiki. They always have plenty to do on there. So now she's made it to, if they're done with their work, they get onto the wiki and are able to do stuff that way as well. So I think they're getting that more um, interaction not only in the math class but you know using it in their other classes as well. So let's move on. Let's see. So this is just an example of you know another Google Doc that I do and how you know it, it comes to them in a form and they're able just to enter it and then the results comes to me and I'm able to look in that spreadsheet for for the answer. So you just eliminated having to have a bunch of papers run off for the kids and you know they're all doing it through technology. So I'm all about the least amount of paperwork, you know, the better, but of course with math, you can't totally get away from doing paperwork because they still have to be able, you know, to obviously do the, do the problems with a pencil and paper because testing is still done that way as well. All right, another thing that I started doing a few years ago on my wiki is a digital project menu. I, I was able to go to this massive technology uh, conference that we have here in Austin, uh, TCEA, and I've, I've been able to go for two years now that I've gotten to go. And uh, sitting in one of the sessions, they were talking about this digital uh, project menu, and it was just giving the kids a choice, kind of like a choice board that they can do in order to decide what 
avenue that they want to do. So I'm going to jump back over to my wiki to show you kind of how I had this set up for the kids. And again, this is something that I have where uh, we do it in uh, the computer lab. You know, I'll say, okay, let's run in there real quick and, and we'll do this. So uh, let me go back. Can get back on. Okay, so I have it over here, and I have the digital project menu, and then I've, I've started with two of them: the proportions tic-tac-toe and the percent baseball. So I'm going to click on the tic-tac-toe one, and one of the things that's going to show up over here is a Voki, and it's Voki.com, and it creates this avatar, and so you can play it. Tic-tac-toe. You must complete the center square. You can choose two other options, but you must make a three in a row tic-tac-toe. So what I did, did is I had that set up, and, and I've got this little avatar reading the direction. So it, it also helps with the, the different styles of learning, you know, the kids who are visual, but then auditory as well. So they're able to see the direction, and then they're able to listen to the bear. And, you know, I guess listening to a bear sometimes is better than listening to me. So they like it. They, they enjoy watching the, the avatar do stuff. And, some of them, when they're finished, can I go create my own? So, so they're really into it. So uh, what I had this was for a uh, project that we were doing at the beginning of the school year on proportions. And proportions is just a big, a big part of what we do for math. And you know, you kind of want to know where they're at and what level they're at to see you know, how far you really need to go into it. So I've got this little game plan link that they could click on. And it brought them to a Google form. And it told me what choices they selected to do for their, their project board. So I had the tic-tac-toe board. And as the directions state, they just have to make a tic-tac-toe. And I've got the center one bolded because I wanted everybody to make a poster. So everyone in the class had to make a poster. But then they had their choice as to what else they wanted to do in order to make the tic-tac-toe. So they could make the one, you know, going down the middle column to do the word cloud, the poster, the graphing. They could make a diagonal, you know, or they could go straight across. And so the kids really enjoyed the fact that they got to choose which way they wanted to go about it. So all of these you can see are linked except to the discussion post. And the discussion post is linked just right back up here where they could um, enter in their information. So I'm just going to take you to one of them because some of them go to different sites. And I think we got them all um, linked in in the live binder. And so this was another uh, Google form. And so it, they just went in and typed. And I'm big about having my kids you know, writing complete sentences, even though they're in math and some of them, but this is math. No, this is school, you know, so you can always enforce other, other subject matters, you know, even if you're in a math classroom, you know, have them writing in complete sentences and watching their grammar. And even though we're in the world of technology, you know, I tell them anytime they turn anything into me, write it like you're turning it in a professional document, not like you're sending a text message, you know, so you should really be clear on how they go about doing it. So that was one of the forms that they could do. Let me take you to the comment. So this took to a form, you know, that goes outside the wiki, outside Google Docs, and they're able to create this comic and, and put in the information, the criteria that I asked for. So the kids loved it, you know, just getting to do something other than your traditional, I'm going to write this down on a piece of paper. And uh, especially the ones who are creative, I had a few come and ask me, can I draw my own comic and, and make that work? I said, absolutely. You know, if, if that's what works for you and you want to go that route, you know, go for it. And so all of these are just different links to uh, different sites that just takes you outside the, the normal realm, you know, of even a class website. And so it's getting them, you know, comfortable moving out across the board. But so anyway, so the digital uh, project menu is just a choice board. And again, you can link it. You can find things that are out there and that are free. And uh, the kids can use it and just, you know, put their, put their knowledge in, you know, going a, a different route. And the other digital project menu that I have was this percent baseball, you know, trying to, to link up. Um, you know, other things that they, they love as well. So, you know, this is the criteria. You know, they had to have a single, a double, a triple home run, and then they had their choices between what they wanted to do. So uh, some of them, again, just they click on the link. It takes them where they, they need to go, and they, they do that work uh, where it needs to be. So just anything, again, you can do. They love technology, and they don't look at it as being a lot of hard work because they're doing it in, in a form that they like and that they enjoy. And, I'm sure you're always going to have the kids who don't want to uh, don't want to use the technology, and 
uh, you know, and stuff like this, like, you know, this is, uh, you have to, you know, this is what we're doing. But for the most part, there's only one or two kids who are really un uncomfortable using it. But some of the other kids just take them underneath their wing and, you know, they help, they help them out. And it, it really is fulfilling just to see them take something, uh, you know, as simple as their math problem and, and put it into uh, different outlets. So again, this slide is just kind of, uh, you know, a snapshot of what we just talked about. All right, the QR codes, these are uh, getting big, and I, I, I came across this over this last summer, so this was something brand new that I started with this year, and, you know, I have kept seeing them pop up on everything, you know, at all the stores, and so I kind of like, you know, what is this? So I got on Pinterest, because, of course, if you want to find out about something and, and find something, you know, Pinterest is, is a great place to go, and so, you know, I typed in the QR codes and found, you know, some activities that they could do with the QR codes. And so I found these two sites. And so this, this one, uh, the uh, QR code, I don't even know how to pronounce that, K-A-Y-W-A.com. And it's free. Uh, there's a button that says, you know, they can generate a free one or generate a safe one. And the free one has worked for me so far. Uh, this one is where they can link it back to a particular site. So let me show you what I just did with my kids, um, you know, about a month ago. And so this is, this is new. And I took them uh, on my wiki, and I created a project page, and I was able to group my kids into uh, different projects because I wanted to assign them each um, a two-dimensional or a three-dimensional figure. So that's one of the nice things about the wiki also is you can put them into groups and only those people in that group can work on this one page. And so it eliminated, you know, other people coming in, you know, and adding their, their own stuff to it. So let me just uh, pull up, let me see, let's try the cylinder. So we go to this page that they had to do for the cylinder. And so I gave them a criteria of what they had to, you know, the figure, the type of bases, and the edges. So this was the information that they had to give me about the, uh, the cylinder. And so then what I had them do, and we're going to talk about Edmodo in just a minute. And so I'm going to go back over here. Where do I have that slide? Yeah. So this was what I had them do. This information was uh, given to them through Edmodo. And again, I'm going to jump back over there. And I saw where most of you are already have used it or kind of know what it is. And then, uh, you know, we'll kind of talk about it. But this is what I had them do. So they, they pulled up the information in Edmodo. And then they had to go type up the information in the wiki. And then they took the, the, the URL, I'm sorry, from the wiki. And they created the QR code. And then they had to put it, what you see here, on the page is a Word document where they put the QR code, and then they had to go find a picture of it. And then they submitted this back to me through um, Edmodo. So over here on the, I think I pulled it up. Yeah, here's where you can create the QR code. So just for example, back here on this one page, they would take this UR code here, and they would copy it. And then they went over and they opened up the page. And then they pasted the code here, and then they generated the free. And so what happens then is the QR code was created, and then they, you know, co they copied the image, and then they pasted it onto a Word document. And so what happens is whenever, you know, you scan the, uh, the, the QR code with the phone, most of the kids that I have, you know, the app on my phone, can I use my phone to scan it? Sure, that's fine. I put one on, like I said, I have one iPad in my classroom, and so I have the app, you know, that they can read the QR code through the app that way. And so I showed them how they can, you know, click on it. And then what happened was it took them to that page in the wiki. And so they were able to see what information you know, was given about a cylinder. So this page here that I have, uh, you know, put a, a picture of it. Um, I have these hanging up in my hall outside my window for all the figures that they did. And so some of the kids I've watched them go up to it and scan the QR code, and it pulls them up to that page, and it just enhances, you know, the knowledge that they had from it. And some of the kids said, oh, this is really neat. This is like, you know, a book report, but it's all on the computer. I was like, hi, you know, all we printed was this one little piece of paper with that little code, and all the information is out there, you know, in, in technology lands. And, 
the, the kids really, really enjoy it. And I've started using these more in the classroom, and I'll just have them in different places, and some of the kids will, will click it. And one of our big things we're doing here um, in the next couple months is uh, I, I love the TV show The Amazing Race. And I've always done a project with The Amazing Race, and this year I'm going to add it, you know, with technology using the QR codes as kind of their information that they need. And so uh, it's just a different way of doing it. And like I said, most of the kids, can I use my, my scanner on my phone? And, you know, sure, absolutely. That was one of the things at the TCA, that uh, technology conference, was using cell phones in the classroom. Uh, some of them call it BYOT, bring your own technology, or BYOD, bring your own device. And so I came back and talked to my principal, and, you know, we had a contract set up, and he said, you know, go for it. And so parents uh, signed it, so if the kid has their contract or they signed it, it allows them to use the cell phone, you know, in my classroom only uh, for, you know, I set up a Google Voice account, and they're able now to, uh, one of my problems on my warm-up when they come in, I've got one of them where they'll text me the answer to it, and the kids love it, you know, and, and it's just a different way. They think it's great. Some of them, like I said, use your the, the QR code app on their phone, and so they're just using it, but that is definitely something that, you know, if your school hasn't branched into, uh, definitely something to look into is that most of these kids have, you know, technology at their fingertips and they're, they're, they're ready to use it. But it's not anything that would stop somebody who does not have a phone because I've, uh, you know, sometimes, you know, they'll use my iPad while somebody else is using their phone. And so it's not anything that I make a requirement, but it's just an extra thing that they can do and, and enjoy. This other one down here, the qrvoice.net, that is one where you can type in something that you want it to say, and when they scan the QR code, the voice, uh, you know, they hear it. So it's not something that they see, it's something that they hear, which again, for those different types of learning, uh, learners, and just the auditory, you know, versus the visual, and it's just something else that, that the kids really enjoy doing. All right, the Edmodo, I saw, again, where most of you have either used this or, uh, you know, have heard of it and, you know, haven't really used it a lot. I set this up last year, and I did it, you know, a couple of times, but nothing that I really got into until this year. And, again, this is something that I have set up. When we go to the computer lab, this is where I have their information where they have to get on. I don't hand them a piece of paper anymore that tells them what I want. They log on to Edmodo. They, they pull it up, and I've watched some of them. They go in, they split the screen where they have my directions on one side of the screen, and then they have, you know, where they're working on the other side. And it's just amazing just to watch, you know, how some of the kids, they're comfortable with this, and they, they have their own way of doing it. Not to say that everyone is comfortable with it. There are still quite a few, you know, that you go over and, you know, have to explain, you know, how to do that. But the kids love to explain how they did it, and the other kids like, you know, listening to other to, to uh, students as well. So this is just, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump over to my Edmodo page. I've got a different class set up for each of my classes. We, I have a double block, so I essentially have three math classes. I keep them for two periods uh, a piece. So I set up uh, three different groups, so my advanced my, and my other two regular math classes. So I'm on the advanced math page uh, right now. So the one that they just did on Monday was uh, this surface area, and so they were able to, uh, you know, get on here, and when I assigned it to them, they're able to see what it is. The assignment is right there for them to see it. Uh, then it, where you can see it says turned in 65, so 65 people, you know, have turned this in, and I can go and I can look at, uh, this is a quiz that they had to answer, and I can look at each individual student and, you know, see how they did on the quiz, if she got them all right. You know, this one here, I can see, uh, you know, she missed two of them. I can come down here and leave a comment for her, you know, or whatever, so when she gets back on, you know, she, she can see that. So uh, this was one way that, you know, I took this regular quiz that I would have given them on paper. We were set up already to go to the computer lab, so I just ran with it. And they, they did the same quiz, you know, on the computer. And actually, on Monday, I was sick. I wasn't even at school. And so they did all of this uh, in the computer lab without me even being there. They just had a sub, and the sub said, I didn't have to say a thing. They logged on. They knew exactly what you wanted, and they, they took off with it. And that just makes you feel good. You know, when you're not there, the kids are still doing exactly what, what they need to be doing. 
Uh, you can do a little uh, alerts like I have here, you know, just a reminder, or, you know, you have to turn this in. Uh, one of the other things that I had them do Monday when I was not there was they had to create a PowerPoint. And so the assignment was here. So, you know, they, they were able to click right on the document that I had attached and, uh, you know, the directions pulled up. And so instead of me having to send them a piece of paper, you know, print it out, you know, 100 copies of it because somebody would, would lose it, then they're able to look at it right there on, on the screen. And like I said, some of them would split screen it and they have it, you know, on one side of the, of the screen and then they would have their PowerPoint, you know, going on the other side of it. And then this turned in, you know, when they go and click turn in, they're able to upload whatever they did straight to Edmodo and I can go click on it. So I'm just going to come over here just real quick and I'm going to click on, uh, you know, what she did. And you see it gives you a little snapshot. So I see that she has a PowerPoint here. And, you know, I could click on it and it would pull the PowerPoint up. I can grade it straight from here. I can go up here into the grade column and, and put the grade on it and she can see it. Um, you know, we have it now out there. And so if we wanted to present it once we got back into the classroom, it's here. They're not having to, to save it, which was, you know, a problem that I was having. We They weren't giving any of our kids any space to save anything. And, they're shutting down and they would save it and then they couldn't go back and retrieve it and it was just ridiculous. But this saves all that and on top of that, I don't have to worry about printing out the PowerPoint. I don't have to worry about having a flash drive, you know, that becomes full or emailing it to myself. Those were all the things that I was doing before, but Edmodo, you know, just allows you to kind of do it. The kids love it. The first time we got on, they said, oh my goodness, this is Facebook for math. And they thought it was fantastic. You can set it up where the kids, you know, can't post anything directly without it going through you. Or, you know, you can just let them go. I've not had any problems, uh, but I do have it still go through me. And then if it's an okay statement, you know, I'll let it come through. Uh, I saw somebody had posted something about the community that you can get on here. And so, you know, I found some videos that you can, that people have posted and shared, you know, other teachers. And so there's so much already out there that you can get going with Edmodo, you know, with really not a whole lot of, of extra effort for it. Um, while I was at that technology conference, I was sitting in one of the sessions and it was talking about Edmodo and I quickly got on and, and I posted this survey question to my kids and asked them, you know, if they would be like to use the cell phones in class, you know, to text me an answer and I sent a, an email real quick to the teacher next door so she went and gave it to my sub and when some of the kids went to their uh, technology class the next period, all of a sudden, you know, they, were, they had logged on and were answering the question. So it was just great to see how they were doing this work how they were doing this work without, um, I'm sorry, I don't know where he is, um, without me even being in the classroom. And, and uh, when one of the things was, you know, that there was the Edmodo app and this one, uh, you know, little girl said, I've already downloaded it, it's great, you know, and so she's, I've seen her get on and, and post things and I finished up my, you know, quiz last night because I was absent. I mean, she wasn't even here Monday, but she already did all the work. Uh, you know, because she had it. And again, the Edmodo app, that was completely, you know, extra if she wanted to. But it gave it gives those kids who really want that extra stuff, it gives them that opportunity. So Edmodo, again, is not something that I make where it's all completely on their own. It's whenever we're, you know, already set to go to the computer lab. Or, you know, if you know you're, you've got one computer in the classroom and they can run over and do a quick quiz, you know, it doesn't even have to be something you can time the quizzes. You can say, hey, after five minutes, it's done. If they're not finished, move on. And, you know, we know that a lot of the things that they have to do now have to be timed. So you might as well, you know, set those time limits now. But the kids, again, they really, really um, enjoy enjoy that those outlets to get out there. All right. So, Edmodo, uh, Facebook. Okay. I saw where so many were like, no, 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 no. I've not even breached into Facebook. And this was something that I, you know, felt the same way as well. So over the summer, I said, okay, I'm going to set it up like this. So I went and I set up um, a Facebook page. This is just a snapshot of it, and I'm going to go to my actual page. So what I did whenever I created this uh, Facebook page was I created a completely different Facebook login completely separate from my personal. So I have a Jamie Cook Facebook that's personal, and I have a Jamie Cook Facebook that is professional. But I don't even use that 
Facebook under Jamie Cook, I created a page which was Miss Cook's eighth grade math class, you know, going beyond the school. So I created this as a page. So it's not anything where the kids can ask to be my friend. You know, it's just like a business page. And so we get the likes, you know, we're a person who likes the page, like I'm, I'm sure quite a few of you, you know, you get those in your news feed, oh, this person has done this. So my original intent for this was, for, I don't know you're seeing the picture up here and all the people posted, you know, their parents signed, you know, that they're able to have their picture, you know, posted. So I, I always make sure before I put anything out there that the kids are allowed, you know, to have their picture uh, put up. So, you know, always, of course, make sure that all of that is going with, with, with your roles and stuff that you need. So I'm just going to kind of jump down here to one of the original ones. What I had was we, I wanted the kids to uh, create questions, and uh, we, we post those questions onto this Facebook page. I am the only one I have made it where I'm the only one who can post anything. People can comment, but I myself am the only one who can get onto this Facebook and post a question or a pictures or anything, I've, I've you know, made it to where, because I'm very leery, as I'm sure some of you are, about not wanting this to turn into, you know, something that I don't want it to be. So this, just for example, um, I have, you might be wondering what the time square means, I have each of my classes divided into six groups, essentially, uh, taking after Ron Clark. Academy, if you've never read his books, they are fantastic, but he uh, divides his into houses, and so that's what we call them, and, you know, so we just have different houses for each class period, and they create a question, and so, uh, you know, I, we're trying the different ways to see which way works better, if it's the multiple choice, or taking a picture of it, or an open-ended, so we're still learning and, and trying to figure out, you know, what's the best way to uh, post these questions out there. But so what we do, you know, is we post the question and then, you know, if, if the people have liked the page, you know, then it shows up in their news feed and we just, we're, we're tracking the progress of these questions and, you know, we'll, um, we'll, I'll pull up the page ever so often in the class and I'm like, okay, how many liked, uh, how many answered our question, you know, this week and we can just track it. And right now, of course, you know, because we're just getting started with this, it's a very slow process. So, you know, it might be two weeks before we ever get anybody else to answer one of our questions. But once they're like, oh, somebody else has answered our question, yay. But these are questions that these kids have created. And let me tell you, some of these questions that I've seen, I'm like, oh, my goodness. And then I'll have them create. I'm like, okay, now make this a multiple choice. And I'll ask them, you know, why did you make this choice here? Because I know that this, this might be a mistake that somebody's going to be, to make for it. And they just absolutely love being able to, uh, you know, come up with something and, and to see it out there. So uh, some of these I have videos. Uh, I've ended up branching into uh, using this also to uh, kind of highlight these kids. And I have different projects that they have to do. And these two videos that are posted, they went above and beyond what I wanted them to do, and they put it into a video, and I said, you know, hey, let's let's put this out there, and the one with the most likes, you know, will win, and, you know, you'll get an incentive trip, and uh, they just thought that that was the best thing ever, and, you know, I was watching their parents post, and y'all come, come here, vote for our kids, and people are posting, you know, oh, my goodness, look at what they're doing, this looks like they're having a good time, and, and it just melted my heart to know that these kids were doing this stuff outside of the classroom and enjoying it and that their families were getting involved, uh, you know, with it. And so, again, I know that it can be a very, you know, unsure about how to do the Facebook. And, again, like I, you know, I may open it up later, but by the time I see it, I'm going to keep it how it is and I'm the only one who can post it. And, uh, you know, we can go up there now, now they can comment, you know, on a post that we have, but nobody can just come on and just post something. And, uh, you know, we've had some good feedback from parents, you know, enjoying being able to see some of this stuff. So you can see some of these questions down here were the, the first ones. I have found that multiple choice tends to be the favored among people answering them. And, you know, and we bring that up and we talk about that as well. And, you know, we talk about how social media, you know, can impact uh, education. And some of the kids have enjoyed, you know, seeing like, oh, look, this person, you know, we had one vote for this. And they'll say, I bet they, they did it because they did this. And, you know, we have a, a quick conversation about it. And, but it's a conversation that they're happy to give you because it's in a form that they're very, very comfortable with. And 
So Facebook is definitely something that you might want to, you know, consider uh, getting involved with, but definitely, you know, just make sure that you're, you're following your protocol. And like I said, I, I didn't want this linked anyway to my, my personal one. So I just created a whole separate account and then created this page, uh, you know, as a business. So no friends, no friends on here, you know, just, just likes. And, you know, it's great to get that little email that says, hey, you know, a new person has liked your page and, uh, you know, seeing where all these people are from, you know, who answer the questions as well. Um, you can see I've got a, pictures from a Mavericks game. That was one of the rewards that I, I took the kids to and uh, for their first semester for the house that had the most points. And, oh, man, you would have thought that um, I gave them a million dollars. Some of them, uh, you know, had never, never leave anywhere, never go anywhere outside of Gladewater. So even just a two-hour trip to Dallas was, was gold to them. They they really enjoyed it and they're very appreciative and just everything that that you can do for them, you know, they they love it. They're they're your babies. Um, and the last thing, uh, this was something you know new getting into was the um, iPad. I don't, I, I haven't even had one you know personally at home. Uh, we had a grant this year with a little bit of extra money, so our principal got each of our teachers an iPad, and so. This came about, oh, I guess about November, so this is not anything that is brand new that I had since the beginning of the year, so I'm slowly integrating using the iPad in the classroom. I, like I said, have one, and so one of the ways that I've found is I will do math stations, so, you know, you kind of send them off into little groups, and like I said, I can't ever get away completely from doing paper and pencil with math, and so, you know, one station is you know, doing, doing paper and pencil, but one of the stations I have is where they, they step out into the hall and they're able to use the iPad, you know, for different reasons. One thing that they had one time was to scan the QR code and it took them where they needed to go. But the one that I just found recently at uh, the technology conference was this screen chomp. And oh my goodness, it is so neat. The kids absolutely loved it and um, had a blast with it. So. Let me pull it up. So this is the app. Uh, this is, of course, online, and you can you get it in the App Store. And so what I had them do was uh, create a figure, and they just had to explain it. So let me just hit paw, uh, play here. I'm doing surface area with a cube. And there we go. Link is going link <laughs> to the width is to and the height is to. 2 times 2 equals 4, and 4 times 6 faces equals 24, and so surface area equals 20, you know, 4. So you can tell what it does is it records, you know, their actual work that they did while also recording their voice. and. Uh, then they're able to, there's a little button on the iPad that they're able to share it, and I copied that link, you know, and, and put it up here. And so, you know, they're out in the hall. Of course, I'm, you know, got the door open, running in between groups that are inside, but then the kids are out in the hall, and you come out there, and you are watching what they're doing. You know, they know that I'm not even out there with them, you know, necessarily, but they're out here, you know, doing what they want to do. And um, it just, it's just wonderful what you can do with it. And you know, we had to go back on a couple of kids and say, no, you know, I can hear everything you're saying and, you know, you weren't making this very professional, so now go try again. And, uh, you know, just giving them that opportunity to realize that other people are seeing their work and, you know, they're they're happy about it. And they just thought that that was just, oh, so neat. And and some of them, I'm finished with this one. Can I do another one? Oh, sure, absolutely, honey. You go and do, you, you do another pro math problem for me. That's just fine. Um, another app that I found, uh, this one actually came up to me through uh, Pinterest, is this three ring binder, and I've got this up here because Jackson Cook is my five-year-old, so, um, you know, this is definitely, you know, just fine for, for you to see, and I was playing with it, and essentially what it is, you have an app on your iPad, and so it kind of links to the uh, a camera. And so as the kids are working, you know, you can go and take a quick picture of it. And then um, up here where it says, let me see, uh, that's not what I want. Um, boop, 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 boop. Right down here, uh, this is when I was trying it out for the first time. We were playing Candyland. And you can click here where it says share. And um, 
right now I've got it over here. You can see where I've got shared with students and shared with parents. And with the shared with parents, what happened when I clicked share was it allowed me a place to type in an email address. So I typed in my husband's email address and I was like, tell me what happens, you know, if you get this. And a little bit later he said, hey, I just got an email that said that uh, uh, Jamie Cook had posted work from Jackson and he was able to click on it and see exactly, you know, what it was. And so I, I just, I've just started doing this with a couple of my kids. Um, just uh, two days ago when the kids were turning in their weekly assignment, one of the boys, he's always been just, you know, trying to get him to make his work clean, and he turned in his paper, and I just looked at him. I said, oh, my word, this is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. It was clean. It was detailed. And he's like, yeah, my dad really made me sit down and, and do it. And so I took a picture of it, you know, and emailed it, and I said, oh, thank you so much, you know, for your help on this. And then uh, his dad is a personal friend, and he uh, sent me a message. He said, that was so neat, you know, to get that and to see. And, you know, even though these kids are in eighth grade, you know, they get excited that you want to share what they're doing. And, and I promise, you know, when some of them have asked me, are you going to send this to my mom? You know, I worked hard on it. And you're like, oh, wow, you know, you're putting in extra effort because you think, that I'm going to send this, you know, essentially to your mom. So that's definitely something. Uh, Threering.com is where it comes from, and it is an app that you can get on your iPad. But then, as you can see, um, it's also linked uh, to the regular computer, so you can, you know, do stuff. You can add comments, you know, or whatever that you want to do to it. So, but definitely, you know how you know easy if you have an iPad or whatever, walk around, you know, take a quick picture of it, and then you can, you know, zap it and. We've got a project due when we get back from spring break, which I'll be recording, so I'm anxious to record those and, and email those, those presentations to their parents, you know, to let them see that, you know, hey, they're doing great things in the math class, and, you know, we just wanted to kind of share it with you. So let me see. Um, again, some of the other things that you do on the iPad, you know, just this quick, quick stuff is just, uh, you know, math games, just find anything you know, for them. And the Flipboard was something that uh, was new. And that's where, you know, it's just a social media app type thing, and you can link it together. And what I did was I linked my class Facebook page to it. And so without ever the kids having to be logged on to Facebook, I gave them my iPad, but they're able, it's like a magazine. They're able to flip through on that Flipboard. They're able to flip through the Facebook page and see everything. And so we'll flip through, and I'm like, okay, you know, now I want you to actually answer uh, this question that, that has already been posted. So. Uh, the Flipboard was something that was uh, pretty pretty unique that I found at that technology conference. So like I said, I'm always trying to find uh, new things and excited to find new things. And I love it when, when you know, people show me, hey, you know, have you looked at this yet? No, but I will. So I think that's pretty much just about it. So um, I hope that I'm, I was able to help and offer a little bit of ways that I use this in the math class, and it can be where you have a lot of technology or, you know, you don't really have a lot of computers or iPads or whatever, you know, you, you can still make it work for sure. Absolutely, and this has been fantastic. Um, I took only a few uh, questions down, most of them were already answered, and one of them is how often do you get to the computer lab? Our computer lab is Oh, it's, you know, sometimes it gets very competitive. Teachers, you know, can sometimes be worse than the kids. But normally I'm definitely try to get in there at least once a six weeks uh, just to get in there and get something done. But every now and then, you know, we have a calendar where you can look on and you can see that there's an, an opening that day. And, hey, you know, we kind of finished up this lesson early and nobody's in there. Even if it's only for 20 minutes, uh, you know, you can run in there and, and, you know, you can definitely get something done. So. All of this stuff is very, with very limited um, access to the uh, computer lab, but the time that we're in there, you know, like I tell them, we are busy until the, the time that we leave out of here. And for the most part, you know, you kind of give them just enough where they're able to get it done. And you do have a few of the people who want to finish and tweak and stuff, and they kind of make it up there, you know, during lunch or whatever. But for the whole class, you know, really, really only once to six weeks, you know, with, with occasionally able to get in there just a couple more times. And is Facebook unblocked at your school where students could comment on the post that you um, post to your page? Um, I don't let them get on the Facebook at, at school. That is definitely something. Facebook is blocked for the kids at school. So if they were on a regular computer and typed in Facebook.com, they definitely could not get on it at school. It is unblocked for the teachers. 
so I'll, you know, run over to my teacher computer, the kids will give me their, their, their problem and I'll run and, and type it up real quick or, you know, do it after school. But for the most part, the kids, and like I tell the parents at the beginning of the school year, you know, I do not uh, expect the kids to get a Facebook account. If they have one, great. If they don't, it's no big deal. So some of the kids, even the ones who give me the questions, they never even get onto Facebook, you know, on their own time because some of them don't have Facebook. Uh, but they'll see it. They've told their parents about it. The, the best way that I got to have more of those likes was when I posted those videos and then the kids were telling their parents, hey, you know, we need people to come and uh, like our video. And so as they were liking the video, they liked the page as well. So that I found has been the best way to actually increase your audience. But it's not anything that I ever, ever make the kids a requirement that they have to get on to Facebook. That's just something we use, you know, within the classroom. And, and if they're on their own personal and I've posted it, yes, if they're at home, they're definitely able to put a comment about something. Uh, but the only few comments I have was them actually answering the question or, you know, oh, that video was great. You know, nothing uh, that was inappropriate or anything like that. That's just... That's great for another alternative for teachers or for parents to be able to access and see what's going on in the classroom, similar to an online newsletter. And those are yes, the main absolutely. questions that I took down that weren't answered um, in the chat. I'm going to go ahead and formally close out the show. We know that people have to have to leave, but we invite you to stay on and continue to ask questions of Jamie. Um, so we'll get back to that in just a second. We want to let you know that on March 28th, coming up in a few weeks, that there will be the 2013 School Leadership Summit. And this is kind of a venture with um, Steve Argonon and some of the things that he's doing in TCAL, which is a group of uh, Technology Information Center for Administrative Leadership. It's a free virtual online conference, so check that out at schoolleadershipsummit.com. And Steve will be having some interviews in the upcoming weeks on March the 12th. He'll be talking with I did, I believe, Harrell Caperton. And on March the 14th, he'll be talking with Seymour um, he'll be having another book club 20.com meeting and March the 19th he'll talk with Jay Cross and Jay Cross is a very interesting uh, individual um, so you'll want to tune in for that session I've worked a lot with him and March the 21st he'll be talking with Adam Bessie April 2nd Matt Hearn and John Hattie on April the 4th all of those are at 5 p.m. Pacific and 8 p.m. Eastern and you can go to Future of Education Dot com to find out more about those sessions. And this is the list of sessions upcoming for our webinar series. And next week we're going to be talking about teaching with Guru, with Zinnia. And we will be talking about Weebly for class sites and student blogs with Valerie Burton. On March 30th we won't have a show in observance of the Easter holiday weekend. And then April 6th, we'll pick it back up with Kyle Pace talking about technology in the music education classroom. Lisa Dabbs on April 13th. We won't have a show on the 20th um, so that everybody can attend the DEN Spring Virtual Conference. We've got some great things planned. You'll want to check that out on April 27th. We'll have Tricia Fugelstead for an, our April teach, Featured Teacher of the Month. And if you'd like to nominate a featured teacher similar to Jamie today, you can nominate yourself or any other colleague that works with educators and students. You can fill out that form, and that form is in the live binder so that you can access it uh, at a later date. And if you would like to uh, fill out the survey, the survey link will automatically open in your browser once you exit today's session. And you can give us feedback on things about today's session that you liked and future topics that you would like to see on our future shows. And you can also request a professional development certificate in that survey link. You can input your name and email address, and then Peggy gets those out to you um, over the weekend. Anytime you watch one of the recorded archives, 
you can also use that same link in the Live Binder, the survey link, and request a professional development certificate for that webinar archive. Just list the session and your name and email address in the survey, and Peggy will get those out to you as well. You can also subscribe to our iTunes U channel. We have an MP3 collection and an uh, MP4 video collection. Or you can subscribe via an RSS feed reader using the RSS feed. On our website, on the archives page, we always post the information for the day's session. And you can subscribe using this RSS feed with any aggregator that you use. And we want to extend a very special thank you to Jamie today for this fantastic presentation, as well as to Steve Hargadon, who's the founder, and Weebly for providing our website and hosting that for us each and every week. And to all of you for your conversation and questions and sharing links and information throughout each session, as well as Blackboard, so that we can meet and discuss every week. And so now we're going to pass it back to Jamie. And if you have questions that we haven't answered, we'd love for you to continue the conversation. You can type them in the chat, or you can click on the hand, and we'll give you the mic, and you can ask Jamie your question directly. And Lori, did you have any questions that I missed? Yes, I did capture some other questions, Kim. Great. Let me go back to my list. Um, this was this came up when when Jamie was showing the how do you solve it problems. Uh, can the the kids see the answers from other kids? Uh, yes, whenever they the discussion posts, yes, they are able to see what the other students have posted. And so we had a very long conversation here just recently because the last uh, how would you solve it that came up, I noticed, you know, I told them, I said, one, I said, I don't want you to think for one minute that I don't read these. And two, it's very obvious to me that some of you are becoming lazy and you are just copying down, you know, what you um, have read in front of you, and I told them, I said, I don't. I guess some of you maybe went to thesaurus.com and found some synonyms for some different words, but you know, I noticed it. And had you actually tried the problem yourself, you know, you would have seen the mistake that was first made, and then all of you continued to make. So we had that long conversation, and we talked about how some of them, you know, when they go to college, might be in an online source, and discussion posts are very big on there, and how this is just helping prepare them, you know, for, for that type of avenue. My husband just started a new job in which he's working from home, and a lot of what he does is through discussion posts. We talked about that, how people are going to be reading what they're doing, and they, you, know, you need to learn how to write things, you know, in an educated standpoint and to, to do stuff. I said, it's fine to go back and look at what people have written, but you want to be you, and you want to be happy with what you've done. And so a couple of the kids raised their hand and they were like, yeah, you know, when I read what, what they had put, you know, I, I could see where they had gotten that, but then I saw what the mistake was that they made. And so it was just definitely gives them that different avenue of being able to kind of see what somebody else's thinking was and either agree or disagree with it. But so the, the new one that they just did, I noticed, uh, was much more unique. The, the, the discussions that they were giving, you could tell were definitely each, you know, their own person. And again, you don't know for sure, you know, if uh, he's actually the one typing it or, I mean, I'm, they're logged in. They have to be logged in to do it. But, you know, they could have easily given their, you know, password or whatever to somebody else. But, you know, we talk about that and it just kind of gives them that integrity. And then when you throw that, you know, and I trust you out there, a lot of them, you know, they don't want to disappoint on that. So they definitely uh, you don't want to keep your trust and, and don't want to abuse it. So, but they, they need those little those little learning those little learning moments to to know that they are being watched and that uh, you know we do know and understand things that some of them may be trying to to do. Thanks, um, Peggy. Wants you to uh, talk about how you use Volky. Then I have some other questions. 
Oh, yes, the Vokey. I mainly have it um, hooked up to my wiki. Um, I think I put one one time in a, in a PowerPoint, and then it just bogged it down too much. So uh, anytime I use it, I will go back into my wiki, and I have it created on a page. But pretty much it just gives that different, you know, here, here's the information that you need that I want you to get off the wiki. And so the directions are written, but then also uh, they're able to, to play it. And you can do it where uh, one of my uh, avatars that I had on there was, I actually picked up the phone and called in what my message was. It gives you a, uh, a phone number, you know, once you sign up to it. And so it's my actual voice that is on there, and the kids just thought that was hilarious. And then, then I did one, uh, you know, where you just type it in, and you can pick what accent you want them to have, how you want it to do. And so as we've been in the computer lab before, when I was watching, we weren't even on that page, but I was watching how some of them were going through the wiki and they were playing it. And they're like, look, look at this. You know, this is funny. Listen to this. And it just gave them, you know, a different way of kind of doing it. But so far, that's the only way that I've used it in the classroom. I haven't really done uh, too much extra with it. It's definitely one of those things on my list to uh, enhance and to do a little bit more with. But, but right now, that's the only way is just to kind of, enhance the directions, you know, and, and for those auditory learners, you know, as well. All right, let's, let's go back to some of my questions that I had from earlier. Um, let's see. How do you check their work on multiple choice questions with Edmodo? And there was a related question that just came in, and that was, uh, are you concerned with students showing their work that's tied to multiple choice answers? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely, and that's why I don't I don't do the quizzes on Edmodo all the time. It's just um, every now and then because I still absolutely am a big person on um, explaining uh, how you got your answer and what you did. And so the, the those multiple choice quizzes are definitely something that I do occasionally, but uh, it's not ever, ever going to replace the fact that I want them to still do stuff, you know, on paper, uh, with the paper and pencil. But uh, through Edmodo, though, for the multiple choice, you can, as you upload your quiz into it, you can click on the correct answer. And so you can have it tell the kids at the end how they did, or you can have it where it doesn't tell them. And so what I found is the kids, they love that instant feedback. And so I will have them do the, um, where I'll have it where it will instantly tell them. So as soon as they finish the quiz, it tells them exactly how they did on it. And uh, the kids are like, oh, man. And then somebody will go post on Edmodo. They're like, all right, you know, I did good on that quiz. And somebody's like, oh, that was hard. I messed up on, you know, question whatever. And uh, we are uh, here in, in Texas, uh, whenever they take their test, uh, not allowed at the middle school level to use calculators on the test, so they're still having to do, you know, everything by hand, and so calculators are definitely something that uh, I incorporate occasionally. It's not anything that you can rely on all the time, you know, like I tell them, you know, when you do use the calculator, show me your steps that you're doing so I can for sure see, you know, your train of thought thinking. And I kind of use the same type of thing whenever I do the Edmodo. You know, I'll let them, if they're taking the quiz on Edmodo, it's definitely a quiz that it's okay if I, I'm fine with them using the calculator. So I've kind of already given them that okay so they don't think that they're cheating, you know, the system essentially because, you know, some of them try to be a little sneak snakes and and do something they think that they shouldn't be doing, but if you told them, you know, hey, this is okay to use the calculator here, so that's definitely something that, because, uh, you know, if they're on the computer, calculators are, are available, so if you're doing anything with math, you know, you definitely don't want to put anything on there that you would not want them to use those resources for, so I definitely pick and choose what I put on there. I don't use it, you know, all the time for the paper and pencil part of it. I have done one quiz before on there, and then I told them that uh, they need to turn in their paper to me that they were using for their scratch paper and where they had they had numbered it. So I, I also do that. Uh, they're answering it on um, Edmodo, and so it's it, that's part electronic, but then I'll have them hand me their paper so that they know that, yes, I'm still looking at it. So you, know, you kind of throw that in there every now and then, and it keeps it uh, where they know that they, they're still responsible, you know, for having to do all that work.
Lori, did you have any other questions? Yes, I do. I have a couple more. Um, this one's about ScreenChomp. Where does ScreenChomp Chomp store videos? Does it go to screencast.com or can it only be shared via email? Uh, whenever I clicked on the uh, screen chomp that they had done, and so what happens is after they have done it, it will ask them if they want to uh, share it. Let me, let me click. I'm looking at my iPad at the same time as I do this. So as they recorded it, then it kind of goes up there and it saves it straight to the iPad in the uh, screen chomp app so that they uh, have it right here. So it's definitely still on the iPad. And then there's a little uh, box that says share, and when you click on that, it sends it, and it kind of, I don't, I'm really not sure where it's sending it to, but it's saved onto the actual iPad. And then what I did was I'm able to look through, you can scroll through and see, and so when you pick an individual one and you watch it and you hit share, you can copy the link. You can email the link, and let me see what the other choice is. Uh, copy link, email link, or tweet this. And so uh, what I did was I emailed the link to myself, and then it, it pulled it up, and so then I was able just to copy that and put it, uh, you know, into a regular browser. And then it pulls up just that, uh, just that, work that, the, that that one student did. So it does save it straight to the iPad, and then you have the choice later to copy it, email it, or to tweet it. Another question, this is a couple part question. Would you consider yourself at the forefront of using technology at your school? Have you felt any resistance from administration or fellow teachers? Um, I am definitely one of the ones who uh, is always trying to find new things. The uh, administration, he, he's been my same principal ever since I've been there, and he always, you know, encourages it anytime I have, uh, you know, an idea, let's do this, let's try this. You know, he is uh, absolutely up for anything. Anytime we do stuff um, outside the normal, you know, stuff of the school, and he'll ask me, you know, to, to put the form together, you know, or whatever, and uh, there are definitely, definitely some resistance from teachers, and I know some of them, I, I joke about it with another teacher, I was like, you know, I know that I'm not a favorite person among so many people, as, you know, because you do, you know, sometimes those people who want to do good, and you're always trying to, you know, do the stuff for the kids, and then other people, and I'm not going to necessarily say that they resent it, but they, I don't know if they feel threatened. I'm not really sure, you know, why some people want to uh, not kind of get on board, you know, with the kids. And I think a lot of it is just resistance to change, maybe. And uh, some of them are happy to, okay, here, let's try this. Or, you know, they're, they're coming up with new things as well, where then some of them are, are uh, no, oh, she, you know, they've created something else, and now we have to do this, but pretty much the things that we, you know, that I've created for the school is not necessarily anything that our principal has said, she's created this, you have to do it, um, but it's just, here, she's created this, this way, you know, we're able, you know, to keep up with it, and I think as time has gone by, they've definitely become more receptive, and as some of those teachers have left and moved on, and, you know, you've gotten new teachers who are, already either inside the change or, or happy to change, you know, it's definitely, it definitely, I guess, boosts morale, which I think might be a problem with a lot of schools. It's definitely a problem with ours. And uh, I think just the main goal is to remember what you're doing is for the kids. And, um, you know, like I tell my husband, I was like, I'm, you know, if, if people, you know, kind of don't like me for the fact that I do stuff, you know, for the kids, you know, that's really more on them and not necessarily on me and uh, the kids kids who I don't even teach, I mean, they know me, they know me, they come up to me, you know, sixth graders, and they're like, you know, you're the one who did this with us, and I'm like, yeah, you know, you're out there with the kids, and it, it's all for them, and I, uh, I had one teacher who, who came up to me after a couple of years, and she said, you know, I, I couldn't, every time you'd, in a faculty meeting, he'd ask you, and you'd say, okay, you know, here's something else, so I'd just kind of roll my eyes or whatever, but when I started doing stuff with the kids, I realized, you know, kind of the reason why you're always coming up with new things, and, uh, you know, she said, she said it's, it's good, it's good for the kids to see that, so I guess that part, you know, kind of made it hit home, but 
you know, really it's just for the kids. And um, anything you can come up with them to help them, you know, I'm for it. And like I said, our, our principal is very open and, and loves it. And I know it doesn't make a lot of people happy when he's like, you know, here's something else we can try uh, because a lot of them, you know, they don't. They don't want to try new things. And again, I think it just might be just a little scared of, of changing and not, well, unsure, uh, not comfortable with it. And until they use it and get comfortable, you know, I think they'll always kind of try to resist it a little bit. And I've got one last question. Um, when you share with parents, um, whether it's a student work or, or what students are currently doing. Do you send individual emails to them or do you send group emails to parents? Yeah, I've never, um, if it's something that I just will say, um, hey, you know, I posted a new thing, you know, just kind of in general. I do the, the, another thing that I use, I've started this year, is Remind 101. It's remind101.com and that's where you can send uh, text messages to either parents or students, uh, but they sign up voluntarily and it comes to them through, like I'll, I'll go on to remind101.com and I can set up a text message to be sent to the people in my group. So I have about 20 parents who signed up uh, for it and so I'll, I'll send out a message, you know, hey, remember, you know, we've got a, a test tomorrow or, um, you know, they have a presentation due or, you know, I posted this and so Remind 101 is definitely something that's a great thing but it's uh, completely uh, anonymous so they don't, I don't see their phone numbers, they don't see mine so, you know, if you're worried about uh, not getting your phone number out there, you know, that's definitely something to do but back to the actual question that you asked me. Um, if it's something that's individual, yeah, I would make that an individual email and sure. just, uh, either post it or attach it. Um, if it's just something that I'm just sharing, you know, within for that one student. Now, if it's a group thing that they have done, or and I'm putting it on either my wiki or the Facebook page, you know, then I'll just kind of do a, a mass blanket say, hey, you know, we I posted some some new uh, some new things out there, so if you get a chance, you know, go check it out. But if it's just for one kid, you know, where I did the three ring thing, uh, I, that one just went out just to that one parent, uh, parent's email, not to, not to everybody. Okay, thank you. Did you have more, Lori? No, Kim, that's all I have. Okay, great. And Peggy was asking, Jamie, if you could talk about how you use the parent wiki. Oh, yes. I started that uh, this year. Uh, how do you teach that, I think, is, is the one she might be referring to. I had a, um, a parent who uh, is a friend on Facebook, and she sent me a message one night saying, you know, hey, I've got a huge question to ask you about how to do this. Uh, her, She has twins in seventh grade. And kind of having a little bit of, a, of an issue with uh, the math teacher and they both had her in uh, two different classes and one was told one thing and another one was told another thing and so it was just complete, you know, not sure what to do. So, you know, it's like, you know, I'm sure there's other people out there, even not necessarily that the teacher said something wrong, but the kid just didn't get it at the time. So um, I started a wiki. And it's how do you teach that, uh, wikispaces.com. Uh, and so uh, it's definitely slowly a work in progress. You know, I'll, I'll try to post as I go, and I've, I've shared it with the other math teachers, but I don't think anybody has uh, really had the time to, uh, to do anything with it yet. But, you know, as I would do a, a quick example in the classroom, I would uh, save the paper and just scan it in and then put that on the wiki. And so it just kind of gives an example of how, uh, you know, you could actually solve this problem. So fractions are definitely something, you know, that, that's always a little tricky for a lot of the kids to, to do. And so that was one of the first things that I started with, you know, was uh, doing the fractions. And because uh, I'm sure most of you were taught the shortcut, you know, with the vision of keep it, change it, flip it. We don't, we don't teach it like that. So a lot of the parents were like, you know, I don't know how to help them because I didn't learn it that way. And so showing them an example, and then I've had some parents stop me that are like, that helps so much, you know, to see that. So definitely something I'm going to work on a lot more this summer. Um, I do a lot of PowerPoints in the classroom, and so I've started, you know, saving just the, the 
uh, lesson part of the PowerPoint and uploading that into the wiki as well so that the parents could see it or the student could walk back, uh, you know, get onto it as well. Uh, that wiki is not where they have to be a member of it. Uh, you only have to be a member if you're going to, like, post a discussion question. So it is where anybody can, can get on and see it. Um, but definitely uh, it's helped so far with what I'll put on there. And that's one of those things to, I want to add to it this summer is add more of the PowerPoint lessons and more uh, scanned-in items. Uh, one of the things I was working on this week was uh, using my smart board and recording uh, the process of working a problem. And so I'm going to try to start working on, you know, uploading some videos as well on how to, uh, you know, go through step-by-step -step of solving a problem. For those people who, you know, it's hard to just read it uh, if they actually want to watch a video of how to go about doing it. And so uh, that how do you teach that is uh, one of those new ones that we're working on and slowly building it up. But so far, the, the parents have, have, have said good things about it. And yeah, anything we can do to help, and, you know, it's, it's a team effort, that's for sure. And if you've got a parent wanting to, hey, you know, I'll, I'll help the parent any way that I can because I know, I know the math now is a lot different than what it was whenever we went through school. Definitely, and I can certainly see that parents would really value, you know, sharing how you do that. Or, you know, and that could be similar to flipped instruction for those who use that model in their classrooms as well. And there are a lot of resources out there. And I came across uh, no MIA or no MIA, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, um, that has like 10,000 video lessons that have been uploaded. And teachers can upload their videos as well to enhance the collection that's already there. So those are some great resources to check out and share with you. Uh, teachers and your students as well. Are there any other questions that we might have missed before we um, let Jamie enjoy the rest of her weekend and close out the session today? I'm not seeing any more come through, um, but you can always contact Jamie. Let's see if we have um, Jamie. If you could type in like your email address or your Twitter handle, um, that way people could contact you online after the session if something comes up. And a lot of her contact information is also in the live binder that you can uh, check out after the show as well. So we encourage you to do that. And the recordings and chat log and everything will be posted this weekend to the archive page. So thank you so much, everybody. And enjoy your weekend. And be sure to join us next week. Um, at the same time, even though we'll have the time change this week, we'll be at the same time, 12 p.m. Eastern. And we will be talking about Guru for Learning and find out what Guru and what that app is all about. So take care, everybody. Have a great weekend and a great Saturday. And we will see you online. Take care. Bye-bye.